Meatball Talk. 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 Meatball
And I'll mention also the cannons and the chests. So at the end of the game, there might be some loot in Port Royal at the end. If you have the most chests, um, mm-hmm. which might be also placed as part of the loot, um, then you'll, you'll get half of that. And I think this, the second, this person who has the second most number of chests will get the other half. Mm-hmm. So this is another way to get more loot, but only at the end of the game. Yeah. And then finally, there's the cannons and the muskets. The cannons mm-hmm. mean, um, when this ship is reckoned, the Spanish fleet is firing back at the pirates, and this is, the cannon's going to hit the person in first position and destroy all his ships except one. Um, the musket, um, which is kind of the opposite, they will shoot the weakest ship and take it out entirely, right? So if you're in third or even later than third position, yeah. <laughs> Steph's having third fun with this theme. <laughs> Sound effects and everything. <laughs> Guys crying and dying. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so um, the way a fleet go- a ship goes oh. down is when there's six cards. So when mm-hmm. someone places the sixth card, so here we have three, four, you know, and then two more. Then boom. Whole lesson. Then um, all of these ships, we figure out who gets what, right? So for example, the person in third position will get this, and then when there's no more positional ones, then the person in first position will, will get his choice of anything else he wants. The cannons. Mm-hmm will have already been shot in that. So in this case, we have two loot left. So the person in first position can choose this, which I would choose. Mm. That's what I would do. And uh, <laughs> and then the next person would have to settle for this. Mm-hmm. Um, but there could be a lot of loot. And then after the ship is destroyed, you flip it over, it becomes a settlement. And until the end of the game, you can continue to place loot, but those aren't reckoned until the game is over. There's no more six-card limit. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. Um the game is over when all of the ships have been placed from all the players and all, all the cards have been used. All up. of the cards in this deck are gone. Mm-hmm. And in general, it works out so you know, the person with the last ship has the last card. It should work out that way anyway. Um, and that's the whole game. Yeah. And um, oh, one important thing. Do you want to tell them about the hidden cards? Yes. So why the okay. Port Royal is important and where, like we mentioned, you're divvying up doubloons that are already there. Mm-hmm. Uh, why that or how that comes to be is that even though each deck has a preset number of cannons, muskets, and also some loot and treasure cards, uh, what happens is that four cards at random get drawn and eliminated from the draw set. At the beginning of the game. Exactly. So no one knows what is removed. And why that's also important is that as you normally play the game, everyone's putting their cards face up, uh, except you can pay a doubloon to the center and leave a card face down. So then what happens now is that people are trying to determine what was played. And so you have to figure out when you're thinking about odds, what is likely, maybe what were the cards that were possibly discarded? We don't know if that's a decreased number of weapons or treasure. So now this is where the idea of bluffing can come in too, because with the cannons or the muskets, If there's one instance of them in the row, it fires, it takes effect, it does damage to to the uh, buccaneers. However, if there's two or more of the same weapon type, it's almost as if the uh, the Spanish guy kind of messed up and started firing at each other, so they kind of wiped themselves out, so they actually have no effect. So now you have to try to determine what is actually there. Mm -hmm. Uh, Does that mean that the person who placed it is either helping themselves, hurting each other, maybe wanting to change the order uh, ahead or, or behind for any given player. What is that? And do we need to cancel that out? So it adds an extra layer of mystery and, yes. and, and guessing. So this is where you start actually now playing each other. Yes. Um, yeah. And it's a really good component, even if yeah. it only happens, you know, uh, three or four times in the game. Um, you'll be sitting. You'll, you'll be sitting there thinking, "Oh, uh, there's a cannon showing up. Is that going to be negated? And and then I'll still be in first position, or mm-hmm. is there another cannon hiding that will? And then and then I'll get shot, or 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 I should, I should well, say the I opposite. Should... But anyway, mm-hmm. or could it be a a, a four a four doubloon treasure mm-hmm. that they're hiding, and they don't want anyone to know that there's treasure? So. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it has a really interesting component. Of, and that's one of the things that I like. Yeah, because I was yeah. going to say, if if because uh, I sometimes think of my mind as, as casino-based games that gambling, is that you've got the card counting, you've got the bluffing. And that's one of the things that, even though this is designed to be a filler game, you can actually draw it out to be a full game just from that component. You can expand upon the basic play and really turn it into, a from a card-laying game to 
a reading each other game. What mm. are we doing? And so that's, I think, where you can get a lot more meat out of the game from yes. what the basic part is. Yeah. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. going in, going more into opinions, um, I, I really like this game, uh, simply because it's a very simple game. But at the same time, you're all you're jockeying for position. There's you know there's a number of different ships where you can jockey mm -hmm. for position. You can say you can say, well, it's not much I can do here, but maybe I can get a better position here, or maybe I can put some loot there, or maybe my particular position, you know, the two position, I could hide a card that's in the two position, and then nobody knows that the two position is important, mm -hmm. and then when it's reckoned, I'll get that extra loot. Um, and there's a lot of different things you can do. You can try and blow out, you know, if you have a cannon, you can yep. you can maybe put that secretly somewhere. Or you can or you just can put it out in the open. You're just like, your first position is going to get yeah. shot, right? Or um, you can try to encourage people to take yeah. first position by just revealing nice, nice cards. Yes, yes. And, and I like the little ships. They're really, really nice. They're well um, cut. And, and they have the nice doubloons that are mm -hmm. in odd shapes, which is exactly what they would have been. And so I think it's a, yeah. it's very thematic. Even though it's very small, it's very thematic. It has a lot of strategy, a surprising amount of strategy, considering yeah. how small it is. And it plays very quickly. You know, we played two games with four players. It was yeah. 35 minutes, I'd say, per, per play. And um, who doesn't love a yeah. cool tin? <laughs> I, say, I like yeah. it. It's like a little lunchbox with a thermos. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. <laughs> so. I guess the only thing that uh, we talked about before uh, mm -hmm. with each other about possible negatives is really the rule writing. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, like, I, I think we've kind of said this uh, before to each other is that um, I think the way that when you read through the rules, it goes through the mechanics of, of what you actually do in a turn first before the objectives so then at first you're like why are we going through else i'm not really sure yeah they explained the overall objective but then they would explain several cards and what they do but they don't explain why you would do it and then you get halfway mm -hmm. three through and then would say how to play and we felt that the rules were difficult to understand i don't think they were organized well um but once you get through the rules and then maybe you read them a second time mm -hmm. It all becomes like, clear, ah, and it is okay. yeah. And then it's mm -hmm. it's a very simple game. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't think I'd ever have to refer, refer to the rules again. No. Unlike some games where you know, because it's very simple. So so that was a negative, but I don't think it's insurmountable. You know, once you understand it, it's a fun game. It's a really fun. Oh game. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And so for that reason, I say rules. Okay, once you get past them, that's fine. But the game itself, this one's a keeper. So mm -hmm. uh, it's not available yet because we mentioned it's 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 hopefully to be released soon mm -hmm. but i would definitely say look out for it give it a go like this is definitely uh one of those ones that has replayability just mm -hmm. because the game is never really the same because of the you know working with each other and sabotaging each other uh, aspect of it so mm -hmm. i'd say go and check it out yeah yeah so that's our review excellent and thanks for watching thank you so much we'll see you next time see you later bye Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.